Credit analysts seek to answer the fundamental question. Does this business have the ability to repay a loan or obligation? And in order to answer that question, they're going to perform several types of analysis. Perhaps starting with industry analysis, which is external analysis, looking at competitors in an industry and determining the degree of rivalry and competition in that industry. Then looking at business analysis, the actual business model of the company in question, how it makes money, how risky it is, its strengths and its weaknesses. Also looking at the management team, what is the quality and character of the management team? What are their attitudes towards risk like? And what is their track record like? Credit analysts also spend a lot of time performing financial analysis, looking at a company's financial statements assessing the trends, the margins, and ratios, all to form a view of how likely this company is to repay its obligations. Taken together, this is a very comprehensive set of analysis, from the very high-level industry view all the way down to the granular financial view. The credit analyst then ties all of these types of analysis together to form a view or a recommendation about the overall credit worthiness and attractiveness of a particular credit situation. Let's look at industry analysis as part of the overall credit application process for a credit analyst. A credit analyst will typically use frameworks to analyze an industry. One of those frameworks could be PESTEL, which P-E-S-T-E-L stands for Political, Economic, social, technological, environmental, and legal forces that impact the general environment and industry. They may also look at an intensity of industry rivalry framework. This framework looks at all sorts of factors to see how intense the industry is. In terms of Pestel analysis, let's take a closer look at what that really includes. Political is very important because a government can really influence an industry. Economic forces, of course, such as rising or declining disposable incomes, could have very real impacts on certain industries. Social trends can obviously make or break a business depending on what type of cultural trend it's riding or not. Technological forces dramatically shape industries and create and destroy businesses at the same time. Environmental factors are becoming increasingly important for businesses and legal changes can have major impacts on companies. So you can see how it's very important to have a framework that captures all of these forces to analyze how attractive an industry is. In later courses in our Credit Analyst Certification Program, we'll be diving deeper into industry analysis frameworks and taking you through them step by step so you can actually perform this on your own. Business analysis. In this section, we're going to look at how business analysis supports a credit application and techniques that you can use to analyze a business. Let's look at a SWOT analysis, for example. We look at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for a business. We'll need to identify several things when performing this analysis. One is comparing the company to a peer group to see what their advantages are relative to those peers, things they're doing well that really make their business durable with a strong competitive advantage. Then we'll have to look at the things that they're not doing so well relative to peers, weaknesses or areas of risk for the business. We'll look at opportunities for the company to grow, for it to increase market share or increase the value proposition to its customers. And then, of course, threats are opportunities where competitors might get in and competitors might actually erode their business. Taken all together, we can get a view of a company and on balance decide whether it is a favorable or unfavorable situation in terms of providing credit to this business. Since this type of analysis can be fairly subjective, it's important to include lots of numbers and quantitative factors as well to truly come up with something that can be used as a measurement for the business. 
In later courses in our Credit Analyst Certification Program, we'll be diving into much more detail around these business analysis techniques. Management Analysis In this section, we're going to look at how you can analyze the management team of a business. This is a very important part of the overall credit application process, and we'll be giving you a preview of some of the techniques that we'll unpack in the Management Analysis course. Let's look at some examples of what we will identify in a management team. We'll look for their strengths and weaknesses. Things like technical skills that they possess or leadership qualities that they have, or the lack of these skills. Then we'll look at their business acumen. How professional and experienced are they? What is their education like and how qualified are they to run the business? We'll look at their approach and their attitude towards managing the business. How do they work with suppliers and customers and how good are they at handling conflict? And finally, you can look at their planning skills. What is their growth plan for the business? How well thought out is it? And how well have they executed against prior growth plans that they've had in the past? All taken together, we can get an overview of the management's characteristics and then analyze them to foresee any possible issues or positive outcomes that could arise as a result. Well, this is very qualitative and subjective, it's an important part of the overall credit application process and in our assessing management course in this certification program for credit analysts we'll be diving much more deeply into tools you can use to analyze a management team. Financial analysis. In this section we'll be looking at how financial analysis supports a credit application. Let's take a closer look at the types of financial analysis that will need to be performed. One is company-specific ratios. These are ratios and analysis that are unique to a particular industry or a particular type of company. So they're very relevant ratios and they can be compared to benchmarks or other companies in the same industry or category. Then we will look at how to interpret those ratios. We won't just look at them in isolation. We will look at them relative to other companies and assess how well the business is performing. We'll also look at capital structure. It's very important to look at how much debt a company has relative to its equity or other capital so that we can make an assessment about how much room it has to take on additional debt. So let's look at an example of company specific ratios for a grocery business. We would want to look at the inventory turnover ratio to see how quickly inventory is sold. We'd want to look at the sales ratio of revenue per square foot. Revenue per square foot is a very good indicator of how much a company can sell given a certain size store. Then liquidity ratios are also very important, looking at the company's current assets relative to its current liabilities. And finally, the profit margin ratios such as gross profit divided by revenue or net profit divided by revenue. All of these will be covered in much more detail in later courses in the Credit Analyst program. Let's take a look at how we would interpret the ratios we were just looking at. For inventory turnover, it's important that a grocery business has very quickly moving inventory so that food doesn't go bad. When it comes to sales ratios, since grocery stores have low margins, they need to have high volumes. So being efficient, meaning selling more revenue per square foot, is very important. In terms of liquidity, having more current assets than current liabilities shows the ability to pay off debt quickly. And finally, when it comes to profitability, all else being equal, of course, the higher the profit ratios are, the better. Now let's look at capital structure. It's very important to understand how the firm is capitalized. So for example, does it have a low degree of leverage? In this case, 20% debt to total capital? Or does it have a high degree of leverage? In this case, 80% debt to total capital. We will be exploring all these ratios and much more in later courses in the Credit Analyst Certification Program. Let's look at key questions to ask when deciding whether or not to move forward with a credit application. 
From the borrower's perspective, they'll want to understand if it's a good deal for them, for the company, or them as an individual. Does it fit with their overall objectives in terms of profitability, the impact that interest expense will have on their profitability, the risk of their business and capital structure, and the ease of administration and keeping the loan in good standing. Then, from the lender's perspective, they'll want to ask themselves if this is a good client to have. Do they think that they're low risk? And do they think that they've charged the appropriate interest rate relative to the risk? From the lender's perspective, if they build a book of good clients that can service the loans and are easy to manage, then they'll hopefully return with additional business and financing needs and the lender can grow their business. So it's very important that both sides are happy with the opportunity before moving forward. Throughout our credit analyst certification program, we'll be focusing on the importance of asking the right questions on both sides for borrowers and lenders. This is a key component of the credit application process. The five C's of credit is an important system that lenders use to measure the credit worthiness of the borrowers that they're considering lending to. The five C's include character, capacity, capital, collateral, and condition. Let's walk through each of these in a little bit more detail. Let's examine character first. When we look at the character of a business, we want to ask ourselves a few questions, like who is the company, what is its reputation, and where does management want to take the business? Now let's look at capacity. We'll be asking questions like what is the level of profitability, how is working capital being managed, and is there enough cash to manage growth and operations? In terms of capital, We'll be asking questions like what is the financial structure of the business? Does it have sufficient equity? And is it able to raise additional equity if required? In terms of collateral, we'll look at what security the company has to offer as collateral. And we'll look at where that security will be held. And what is the most appropriate type of security to take? Finally, let's look at condition. What is the attractiveness of the industry that the company's in? Does it have any competitive advantages? And finally, what are the guidelines and obligations that are relevant to this specific loan agreement? Taken together, the five C's of credit are very important for summarizing the lending opportunity to a business. We have an entire course dedicated to the five C's of credit where we'll spend quite a bit of time walking through each of these five C's in more detail and helping you put them all together, whether you are looking at things as the borrower or as the lender. Fundamentals of Credit Wrap-Up In this course, we've covered a lot to really give you the foundational skills you need to understand credit. We started by outlining what credit consists of, whether it's coming from a lender or from a provider of a product or service. We've looked at the various types of credit that exist, ranging from revolving credit to installment loans and open credit. Then we explored the different types of loans that fall under credit, secured loans, unsecured loans, and the various subcategories there. We then explored different types of credit analysis that you would perform as a credit analyst looking at a lending opportunity. And finally, we gave you a preview of the five C's of credit five very important principles when evaluating credit opportunities. All of these topics will be explored in much more detail in later courses in the Credit Analyst Certification Program. Thank you so much for joining us for this introductory course from the Corporate Finance Institute.